In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of Explain how the cash flows from operating activities section is created using the direct method. Now, if we don't know where to start or what exactly the direct method is, we probably can first think that we're working on something related to cash flow statements because support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube to page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it because that's the section we're on so we may first just start off what is a cash flow statement and what are we trying to do what are the operating activities and by explaining those things, even if we don't know exactly what the direct method is, we can probably pick up some points and then we'll get into the direct method. So the statement of cash flows is going to be one of the major financial statements included. We have the balance sheet. We've got the income statement, statement of equity, statement of cash flows. Statement of cash flows is going to be reporting the change in cash, the activity on a cash basis and reporting those in three major categories, operating, investing, financing. Now the operating section is really the one we want to spend most of our time on because that's the main category. The uh, operating section you can think of as similar to like the income statement uh, of, of the financial statements. The balance sheet represents a point in time. The income statement is really telling us the story, the activity that is happening. And that's what the statement of cash flows is doing. It's telling us a story, the activity. It's just using a different uh, item to tell us when the story is happening. The income statement is using accrual terms, revenue recognition principle and matching principle to tell us when activities happened. And the cash flow statement is telling us basically when things happened based on when the cash actually changed, changed hands. So the statement of, of cash flows is going to give us those cash flows and the operating activities then is going to be similar to the income statement. The bottom line of the operating activities is kind of like net income on a cash basis. So if we have cash flows from operations, that's kind of like similar to net income on the income statement. So in other words, the cash flows from operations is the major category. Typically, that's where most of the activity is happening. There are probably going to be more line items, more things going on related to the statement of cash flows in the operating activities than financing or investing. So once we get that, then we can think, okay, what is the direct method? And uh, the direct method, we can compare and contrast to the other method. The other, there's only two of them that we can typically use. And the other is going to be the indirect method. Now, it seems counterintuitive that the indirect method is actually the preferred method and that that's the one, you know, that we typically will see most of the time. Part of the reason is it's required oftentimes, even if we use the direct method to then have a reconciliation, which is basically the indirect method as well. And so, um, therefore, the direct method is, is probably something less seen, although more intuitive, meaning uh, the direct method makes a lot of sense when you just think about it. You can probably explain the direct method to someone more easily, meaning the direct method is just going to take uh, the income statement, in essence, and convert each line item, revenues and expenses, to more of a cash basis from an accrual basis. So how would we construct the, the uh, operating section under a direct method of the statement of cash flows? We can kind of take the income statement and just say, well, revenue uh, is revenue on an accrual basis. On a cash basis, we'll convert it to a cash basis and call it you know, cash received from customers. The cost of goods sold expenses on the income statement on an accrual basis or on the income statement, we'll convert it to say something like cash paid for inventory. Any other expenses we have on the income statement are going to be on an accrual basis. We're going to record it to reverse it to just cash paid for expenses or something like that. And and that makes intuitive sense, I think, to most people. We'll, 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 we're just going to take the income statement and convert it from an accrual basis that's driven by accrual principles, revenue recognition and matching and convert it to basically an income statement that's driven by recognizing revenue and expenses when cash happens or similar to that we're recognizing cash flows 
based on these activities. And so that's just basically what the direct method will be. Now you could compare and contrast that to the indirect method just to give more detail. Uh, the indirect method is going to start with net income and reconcile to cash flows from operating activities. And uh, so it's kind of like starting at, the, at net income and then reconciling, reversing out everything to get to a net income on a cash basis, cash from operating activities. And the reason that's nice to have is because it gives that reconciliation. It tells us the difference between cash flow from an operating and cash flows from an investing. So uh, that's why one reasons why sometimes it's, it's required to have the indirect method even though we're using a direct method even though the direct method is probably more intuitive. It's probably easier for us to explain the direct method to people. And it, it's also important to note that uh, the direct method uh, and the indirect method only differ in the operating section. So explain when, it, when we ask the question here, explain how it how the two methods differ in terms of creating the operating activities. It's not like they're, they would differ on the financing or the investing activities. Those two will remain the same whether we use a direct method or indirect method. The direct method and indirect method, in other words, only apply to the operating activities.